Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss not only Hurricane Francine and what could come, but today being the peak of hurricane season, or is it? If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltippets.com for Tuesday, September 10th, 2024. The black arrows pointing towards Tropical Storm Francine, uh, forecast of the strengthen to a hurricane. Then we have three tropical waves in the Caribbean and main development region in red. We have the Invest 92L in purple. Invest 93L in blue and former disturbance 2 in pink. So here you can see the vorticity, the spin and energy in the atmosphere associated with all those tropical entities we just noted. All the way on the right side of the screen, you can see the elongated, stretched out vorticity of disturbance 2 and 93L, which is going to take time to consolidate. Uh, but we'll discuss that in the video and we'll show you how that's going to happen. But you can see all this spinning energy in the atmosphere, but a lot of it's not really, really coming together yet. Technically today is the peak of the hurricane season, climatologically on September 10th, but based on how everything's been going and what's forecasted to potentially come, I'll show you in, later in this video that the peak of hurricane season where we see the most activity, which normally would be today, might actually be delayed till October. And I'll show you why. So here's the latest satellite image of Tropical Storm Francine. Uh, look at, you got that big burst of thunderstorm convection near the center of the storm as this continues to uh, rapidly move to the north as we're going to see this strengthen a little bit further before making landfall with Louisiana. It's forecasted to make landfall sometime in the late afternoon, evening hours of Wednesday into Thursday. And the sh forecast has actually shifted eastward. So now even potentially uh, New Orleans is in play for seeing the center of the storm move over. And even if it doesn't, you're going to get a lot of rain from this system. So we've got winds of 65 miles per hour now, and it's moving northeast at 10. Here's the spaghetti track guidance models, show, which is what the cone of uncertainty is based off of. And you can see that it's going to slow down after moving inland. And it, that could be cause for concern to drop a ton of rain in the region. Here's the intensity guidance showing right now we're only expecting it to be a category one, which is a good thing. We don't want any rapid intensification to category two or three. And here's the amount of rainfall that we're expecting. As you can see, anywhere in yellow is between four to six inches. Orange is six to eight. So we have a high chance, a moderate chance for uh, flooding in the region, especially in Louisiana and Mississippi. And upon landfall, we could see upwards of five to 10 feet. Obviously, this will shift more eastward if the track continues shifting eastward. So, and even places that are only four to seven or two to four right now on the eastern half of this map could be five to ten if the storm continues tracking more east than expected at the moment. So here's the key messages from the National Hurricane Center regarding Francine. You could pause it to take a chance to read it. On the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. Now here is a close-up view of Invest 92L, which is really... In the model, it's not showing a good sign of development. It still has a 40% chance, according to the National Hurricane Center, over the next two and seven days, which by that means pretty much in the next 48 hours, if it doesn't develop, it's likely not going to as it continues westward and will likely dissipate if it doesn't form in the next two days. And you can see, because of its lack of development, we're not really going to feel the effects of the upper level trough, so it's not going to curve back out to sea, and any of this uh, remnants that do survive will just pass through the Caribbean islands as a strong tropical wave, likely. As you can see here with the model intensity guidance, only a few models are supporting tropical storm development now. Now here we have newly formed 93L. This is the tropical wave that came off the coast of Africa. 
and on the bottom left of your screen, that is what's left of Disturbance 2. And that elongated stretch of vorticity, like I said, is going to have to combine with each other. So here's Disturbance 2, that X on the mark, and then over the just to the north and east of that, over the Capo Verde Islands, is 93L. So those two clusters will eventually merge, and 93L will become the more dominant one. So we have this stretched out cone shape of where the uh, next tropical system could potentially develop in the main developed region. Here's its plot of uncertainty from the GFS ensemble model. We don't have all the models in just yet since 93L is the newly designated one. And we potentially could see this be our next hurricane. So here's the GFS model. We'll use this to go day by day to see how this could all play out. Black is Francine, purple 92L, pink Disturbance 2, and blue 93L. Upper level environment, we have the upper level ridge over Francine, which is allowing it to intensify to a potential hurricane. Not so much over the main development region, lackluster environment there, but low wind shear, so it's supporting the moisture and protecting it from the Saharan air layer just to its north. 24 hours from now, we have Francine, likely a hurricane, on approach to the eastern half of Louisiana at this point and making landfall sometime later in the day on Wednesday, maybe as late as midnight on uh, Thursday morning, September 12th, as a 980 millibar low pressure system. Two days from now on Thursday, the, uh, the September 12th, we have Francine now over Mississippi, and we have the beginning of the merger of Disturbance 2 and 93L out in the middle of the Atlantic, we also see that 92L is starting to dissipate at this point. Even though it is under the southern half of an upper level ridge, we don't see much development going forward as it's going to be drying out and not sustaining its moisture bubble. So then we go to five days from now on Sunday, September 15th. Francine is still lingering around the Mississippi River Valley. Uh, its remnants at least, so that's a cause of concern, as I said. Could see a lot of flooding from this system. We see that 92L has made its way to the Caribbean islands, but just as an open wave, no development. And in blue, we have 93L, which is still a very broad area of circulation, not quite anything developing there just yet. And we see some increasing wind shear from an upper level trough just to its north, and that's eroding away at some of its moisture. So we have a lot of dry air intrusion on the north side, and then the eastern side is where we see all of its thunderstorm convection. So on at least the GFS, we're not seeing development on this one, and it remains open uh, with a, a very small tight vorticity trying to form just to the north of that elongated trough area. But in seven days, we also have to look out for any of the remnants of Francine or frontal boundary associated with the remnants trying to form a potential subtropical storm off the southeast coast of the United States. Here it is on the GFS model. And then if we look at the European model, which shows pretty much almost an agreement, except a stronger 93L and also a stronger potential tropical or subtropical storm forming from the frontal boundary remnants of Francine moving up to the southeast coast of the United States. So we'll keep an eye on that region. You can see it on the ensemble models. I have it highlighted by our green hexagon here. The blue one would be 93L and black is the path of Francine. Now after this next week, we'll still see potential development in the main development region. Climatologically, the uh, Climate Prediction Center is also calling for that potential development next week off the southeast coast of the United States. So we'll wait to see if the National Hurricane Center designates that area. But then we get towards the last week of September into the beginning of October, and we also have to bring concern back towards the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And 
we could still see development in the main development region as well. So why do we see potential more development? Well, the left box here, we well, you see the black arrow. That is the rising motion from Francine. And we have that very, in between Francine and our tropical development in the main development region, we have a large area of dry air with our yellow and orange here. Out in the Western Pacific, where we saw a super typhoon make landfall in Japan, we have the MJO, very broad area of, of strong, robust, rising air. That's going to eventually shift with this diagonal box I drew. So by the time we get to the last week of September into October, all this green that you see here from about September 24th, like pretty much the beginning of fall, through the rest of October, we see a large area of green across the Atlantic Basin. That would be what we would normally see in September, which is why I called this potentially a delayed hurricane's peak season, because normally when we would see it now on September 10th, we might see it in the month of October. So we'll see if this poll, uh, holds true. Uh, this is experimental. These uh, long range more forecasts, so we'll keep an eye on it and see if it stays the same or gets tweaked at all. In the meantime, we'll continue to watch Francine, the impacts it could bring to Louisiana and Mississippi. Invest 92L, if an if it does develop or it doesn't develop, it's going to bring some impacts to the Caribbean islands, even if it's just a strong tropical wave. So some rain and gusty winds for you, potentially. And then disturbance to 93L's eventual merger. Will it become a hurricane like the European model suggesting or just a broad area of circulation like the GFS? We'll keep an eye on it. Next name on the list would be Gordon. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.